Hello, sports fans. Welcome to another TV5 Sports presentation. Tonight, we're up at Shelby Valley for the uh, second round of the 59th District Tournament. I've got head coach Cindy Spradlin of the uh, Miller Lady Mustangs with me. And, Cindy, good to see you again. You're coming in here taking on a Pipeville team, which you've already played like two or three times this year. Let's compare this game to some of those other games that in earlier in the year. All the games we've played with them have been close games, but we beat them one time in the Class A. They beat us twice in both regular season games, so it's been a pretty even matchup so far. All, all the other games, I, I understand, were pretty close games. I got to see a couple of them, and I know that they were real close. It could have gone either way, and these two, two teams coming here, uh, the number two and three seed, so that's probably the way it should be. Yeah, they have been close games. I think we're pretty evenly matched. Just, I told the girls before we came out, I said whoever wants it the most will win tonight. Cindy, you come in here with a record of 9-16. I know you got started off real good earlier in the year, and then toward the middle of the season, kind of slacked off a little bit, and then toward the last of the season, I watched uh, two of the games. You got three or four wins under your belt. The girls seem to start playing a little bit better toward the end of the season. Well, I hope so. We won our last three games in a row, and I feel like we kind of had some momentum coming into the tournament, which we really needed because we lost like 11 out of 12 games up to that point. So hopefully we ended the right way and we're ready to go. Cindy, of course, uh, you start, I think, like five seniors on this squad. Of course, uh, the Bartley girls, one of them's a row now. She got married. Uh, let's compare some matchups. Of course, Pipe's got uh, Charity Burke in there and a real uh, young girl, uh, Kimberlyn, I believe. She's just an excellent ball handler. She sure is. She's giving us a lot of trouble, too. We don't match up well with Burke man to man. She can post up or she can go outside. And it's hard to guard her with one of the big girls. She takes them out away from the basket and then if we post her up, if we put a guard on her, she'll post them up. So we've had a hard time matching up, but Pipe's other players have really beat us. They're young girls that can just stand out there and hit an open 12, 15 foot jump shot and that's that's really giving us more trouble than Burke. Well, I know that you, you've got a good shooter too on this squad that can uh, go out there. Of course, Becky Clevenger, if she gets posted up, she can hit it and also Valerie Little. Right. Becky's been playing well. She's had three really good good games and she's got a lot of confidence right now with her shot and hopefully they'll give her a chance to shoot it but what Pipeville did the last time they came out and put a lot of pressure on the ball and we didn't handle it very well we didn't do a good job getting the ball inside to the twins because we never actually got into an offensive set but we've been working on it and hopefully they'll do better against it. Cindy what about your thoughts on that earlier game uh, Tuesday night up here Pike Central and Shelby Valley girls Shelby Valley almost coming away with a big win over Pike Central that, the number one seed. That was a good game they gave Pike Central all they wanted it I think if they had a few more minutes, they might have pulled it off. But that was a good game. It was fun to watch. So you never know what might happen. Okay. Well, Cindy, as always, uh, it's good to talk to you. Good luck tonight. Thank you. All right. Cindy Spradlin, the head coach of the uh, Lady Mustangs, Dr. Don. Let's see if I can find Coach Maria Shockey here. She's out here somewhere. I saw her a little bit earlier. Let's see. Coach. Coach, how are you? Bill Bevins back to teach the Pipe Sports. We've got head coach Maria Shockey, the Pipeville Lady Panthers. And uh, coach, the number two and number three seed coming in here. You guys have met like three or four times earlier this season, and it's just been a uh, toss around. Either team. Either team. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to play a good game tonight. We know what to expect from the past experience with Millard, and we just have to be ready to play. Coach, I know your team likes to get it up and down the court. Uh, you got uh, a couple of real young players that's just doing just a fantastic job for you. And of course, uh, the Burke girl in there, she's probably your senior captain on this squad, no doubt about it. Absolutely. We, uh, we do like to move it up and down the court. We uh, think the pace is a very important part of our game. Uh, we do depend on a lot of young players. And uh, because of that, we have mistakes. But like I said, the pace is very important for us. Coach, I always love to talk matchups when it comes to these district tournament games. Let's uh, talk about some key matchups the way you see it tonight. Well, I really, we, we do not do a good job matching up with Miller. The two big girls are just too big. Uh, we're going to try to to we're going to try to get a little help. Maybe we're going to play man to man and try to match up with them and get a lot of help from all over the floor. I'm really impressed by Kimberlin, the little Kimberlin girl in there. She just, I just love to watch this little girl play. Well, it's, I have to stop and remind myself that she's 
she's just an eighth grader, but she, she really pushes our team and makes them go and really works hard and gets a lot done. Of course, we talk about a lot of youth in this uh, tournament this year, Coach. Of course, uh, Pike Central started in eighth grader the other, the other night. The little lady just handled the ball extremely well and quick as a cat. Absolutely. <laughs> Jill, even though she's an eighth grader, she ended up starting for us last year as a seventh grader. So. She's young, but she's got a little bit of experience, and just like uh, the other young girls, we put them in when we need them and, and just expect them to go out there and play. Coach, uh, give us just a few quick thoughts about that first game. Of course, uh, Shelby Valley Lady Cats, they almost defeated the number one seed up here that Pike Central. Uh, Shelby Valley has really come on strong in the second half of the season, and I expected it to be a really good game, and uh, I wasn't disappointed. It, they pushed it all the way to the end of the game, you know, making it close, and uh, made Pike Central really work for it. Well, Coach, as always, it's good seeing you, good uh, talk to you, and good luck in tonight's game. Thank you. All right. All right, Dr. Don, Maria Shockey, the head coach of the Pava Lady Panthers. So let's go ahead and step on out, and we'll bring it back for the opening tip between the uh, Pikeville Lady Panthers and the Lady Mustangs of Millard. You're watching and listening to WPRG TV 5 Sports on your Intermountain Cable Network. I'm Attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. The hottest device of the new year is now at Appalachian Wireless. The Samsung Galaxy S21. Till the end of February, all Samsung S21 models will be $400 off on the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution, encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system.
Okay, there you have it, our starting lineups. Let's uh, get by Rick Bentley, our PA announcer up here, Bill Bevins, going your host for the play-by-play and color commentary. I'm Dr. Don on camera. This is the high school district tournament action right here on your Intermountain Sports. Later on tonight, it'll be the boys going at it. That's Titan Central and Titan. But right now, we've got what appears to be a great matchup in tonight's first game, Darren. Oh, absolutely. At least on paper, as you said, these teams have met three times this year. Bible's come away with two of them. That's Charity Burton going against uh, number 40 in uh, for Miller. That's Whitney Martin. And uh, ball's playing by Miller. Gets the strategy there by Burton. She just backs out of the circle when the ball goes in the air. Miller plays it no contest. Of course, uh, you know, Miller's got the, the twin tires, as they call them. Rowan Martin. Good Valerie Little out front, top the key. Ben Archer, Martin, number 40. Bartley, number 10, Whitney Rowe. Bartley drives left baseline, first 10 in the park. Pumps the ball into the net by the middle of Lady Mustang. The little Lady Mustang is visiting us on the scoreboard tonight. Beautiful baseline move by Bartley there. She just put the ball on the floor and went to the goal. Here's Jillian Kimberlin, number 32. She's just an eighth grader for this squad, and she is a dandy. Here's Mara with it outside top of the key, guard closely in there by Rowe. Charlie Bird, probably one of the best uh, players in the 15th week. The girls actually put the shot up about 10. Shot, no good. Picked out it's in there. By Rowe, off Miller. She'll give it to Valerie Little. Ricky Clifford. A couple of pretty good guards in there for these uh, uh, Lady Mustangs. They can shoot the three if they get open. It'll be interesting to see how long the Bible stays. Well, I was just going to say that I see they switched out of there. They were man to man last time down. That didn't work. They go to their little zone that time. Miller just throws it up over the top for Bartley for two more. Okay, quarter's net in favor of the Lady Mustangs. Goes by Sydney Spazlin up here. They're trying to advance on and take on uh, Lady Hawks and Pike Central in the championship game Saturday. You two, the big girl on the knee, shot that. No good, but a whistle and foul. It'll go against the Lady Mustangs. That was ball number five. It was a beautiful post position that she used. Well, to draw the first one, I believe the first one's going to go against Bartley. She's been. Uh, all over the place in this game early. And Connie Mullen, she's a senior for this squad. She'll go in there. She's posted up well. Got position on Bartley in there. More than nothing. Miller on top. 622 left to go. First quarter play. Great news of 59th District Tournament on your Intermountain Sports Cable Network. First shot up. Good for our Mullen. Mullen's may end up being a key to ball in this game. Bill. She's going to have to get the two big girls for Miller. Roll and Bartley in foul trouble if they're going to have any kind of control of rebounding. They're right with shot rebounded by Brittany Martin in there. But Bartley and Rose, seniors, twin towers, they call them. Six foot well, left to go, first quarter play. Here's Rose with it, right baseline. Guard close in there by Connie Ball. She looks into her sister, but it's uh, cut off in there by Charlie Burton. She's on the run. Right the Lady Panthers. She pulls up from 12, but it's blocked in there, I believe, by Rose. Turnover, I suppose, to roll that time, but 
pass was a little low, though. I think it was kind of hard to reach the two girls at that. Throw that thing on up there. Let them go up and get it. Kim Keeper. She'll set the play for these Cotton Lady Panthers. She'll drop a real shot. Panchard. Burke. Burke. Very close to the top. Working on the right baseline. She drives. Shot inside the lane. No good. The rebound of the top one. Left baseline, cut off in there, but sweet spin, turn around, jump shot, no good. I believe we'll get over the back call against the top one. Absolutely, this model is a little too aggressive, trying to get their offensive rebound, picks up her first, seeds first. We'll be milling basketball, they'll be bringing it to length and forth, they lead it 63, 417, let's go. Takes away from her. Here comes the eighth grader shot at. Good in there. Missing on a foul. Well, that's just some of what you're going to see for the next five years out of this young lady. She's going to be a tremendous player. And you notice, Darren, she couldn't have left handed also on that left side. Absolutely. Fundamentals are what builds great players, and that's perfect fundamentals. She can tie it up here if she connects on this free throw. So she just takes away from her. Let's see. I believe we got a lane violation. It's going to go the other way. We'll go back over to the ladies in the gold uniform. The lady Mustangs off Miller. Oh, well, if that's a turnover, that's one as a coach you can take because uh, Kimberly was being too aggressive trying to get her own rebound. And Kimberly almost took it away again, but uh, they got her with a whistle and a foul this time. She's been good aggressive defense. So Kimberly will pick up her first team second. Ball comes in. It's Miller. And they throw it away. Here's Kimberlin with it into Nara. Kimberlin, the little point guard. She'll, she's a playmaker for this squad. 347, they go first quarter. The old leads it by one. 6 5. Up to Nara. She thought about it. Now she'll back it out. 23. Yes. Shot up and in from Burke. Charity Burke scoring. She's a junior for this squad. 5 10 junior. Determined penetration that time of Burke. She was not going to be denied that basket. Gets it up off the glass with Here's Valerie Little. She takes it down the lane. Shot at about six. No good. Move down about an arrow. Kimberly's hustle has put a little fire under these Lady Panthers right now, and they've served back. They're in the lead. Burke, she's guarding on Valerie Little. Over the ball, she shoots it about four. No good. Move down about Becky Clevenger off the Lady Mustang. Good killer. Good pass the timeline. She's in a hurry now. Three minutes left to go. And Pottle leads it by one. Seven to six over Miller. Ball remains in her man-to-man defense. Now a little shot outside. Becky Clevenger was about a 17 to 18 that shot. No good. Rebound by Selena Smith. Go back to Clevenger. She's up at the top of the key. Now she drives down the lane. Hands it to Rowe. Rowe shot at the end. Whitney Rowe scores for Miller. Forwards are pacing Miller right now. They have four and two respectively. The latter being the first basket for Rose. Charity Burke. She pulls the trigger from three. No good. Playing by Selena Smith up Miller. Smith just in the right spot. It's right down. The ball bounces in her last. She has to pick it up and go the other way. They can clap you. They look inside to Rose. Rose just lays it up and in. Very hard. Come in there and go. I think now most of the uh, tall girls up there underneath just lob it up. They'll use that backboard over there. Absolutely. They're seniors. They know how to play that post position. And you see perfect execution right there. As Rowe got deep under the basket, forced the defender under the rim, leaves himself wide open for the layup. And on the rebound, we have a whistle and a foul. It'll go against Becky Clevenger or Miller. But it's she pushed from behind, so it'll belong to the girls in the white uniform. The white lady, lady Panthers. Clevenger picks up her first, team second. Shot up. No good. They say the last test by Rose, so we'll go back over to Miller. 10 to 7. Lady Mustangs, Mustangs on top. 148 left to go. First quarter. Bring you Midget Knife District, District Tournament action on WPRG TV 5 Sports or Intermountain yeah. Cable Network. Bill Bevins along with Aaron Gearhart for the play by play and color commentary. And we got the Dr. Man on camera up here. Good balls, man. Shot up. No good. Get a whistle foul on the rebound. And Darren, help me with that name here. This uh, young lady, I believe, from Yugoslavia down there, if I'm not mistaken. 
That's not right. We just try to fix the song. I don't know. I kind of like that Cobra Vink. Ball comes in. Pineville. No. Look at somebody. She's having trouble. Now find Havana Cobra Vink. Shot up about six. No good. Big man about Becky Clever. Here comes the Lady Mustang. Driving a little quickly across the timeline. She drives. Shot up left handed. No good. Big man about Pineville. Oh, she lays it back up. Throughout this first period, she now has six points to go along with three rebounds. Charity Burke shot at about eight. I'll tell you what, we talked about it. Uh, you know, it's it's with Maria uh, Shockey, probably one of the premier players in the uh, district down the region. Charity Burke, she's a junior down there. She, she can play, play the game of basketball. Absolutely, she has two field goals this period, which is low for her. I'm sure she'll pick that pace up as the game progresses. Good quality, way outside for about 12. She's got it. I believe it'll go against Powell there. Oh, wait, check, check the number. It's against Burke. She picks up her first. Charity Burke's first personal team down number three for the Lady Panthers. Here comes these Lady Mustangs. That's Valerie Little. Burke making clever. Uh, Turn that guard, Daddy. Hope to clever. They're looking inside. They find Lowe. Let's see. Good shot at. The whistle foul. I don't believe they'll count the basket, though, there. Well, you can see they haven't made a rule. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. All right, back for more uh, district tournament action. Bill Bevins, Darren Gearhart, and Dr. Don for WPRG TV Five Sports, and uh, we're getting ready for the second quarter play. Millard on top of Pottle right now, 16-9. Millard right in the back of Brittany Bartley right now. She's uh, picked the team up and carried them through that first frame. Let's we'll see how this one pans out. Nara, she's open from about 10, shot and no good. Rebounded in there by Bartley. Gives it to her sister, Rose. Now back to the guard, Becky Clevenger. Clevenger crosses the timeline. Guarded in there by Copervinka of uh, Pikeville. Ball goes out of bounds, but you gotta love the hustle of the youngster down there, uh, Jillian Kimberlin for Pikeville, Darren. Absolutely, he's just uh, has the enthusiasm of youth right now on the floor, Bill, and she's uh, hustling. Playing hard basketball. Love to see it. Ball comes in the row. Shot up and good from about three or four feet on that right baseline. And we have already begun to see a definite pattern emerge on the Millard offensive end. 
find Roll or Bartley and let him put it on the glass. Charity Burke put shot up, no good. And I believe who did he get with? Get a goal against Pavel. Emily Johnson, I believe. You're right. Uh, so that's I think it's number ten. We'll check the name. I've got it as Angela Childers. I'm going to pick up her first personal. She came up underneath. Team foul number five. I can tell you, number ten is Emily Johnson's foul, Darren. Okay, we'll uh, correct the roster <laughs> then. Here's Becky Clemswick. Shot up inside lane, no good, but she'll go to that charge as fast as she was fouled. I think it's going to be uh, the same miss. No, uh, corrected. It's number 23, Copra Vinka, picking up her first, first personal. Team foul number six. They're on the roster. They have Emily Johnson's 11, but she's wearing number 10 out there. Okay. I'm going to make that correction. First free throw. For Becky Clevenger, she'll have one more. Merrill leads it 18 to 9, 7 13 left to go in the first half of play. Second free throw, no good. Playing by Nara, Pipe and we're going the other way. Pipe moving from her left to right. Here comes Charity Burke down the lane. She's fouled. Her goal against Valerie Little. Little picks up her first team foul number four for the Lady Mustangs. Here's Pottles, Jillian Kimberlin with it. Over to Charity Burke. Burke, left baseline. Over to Johnson. Johnson, guard in there by Rowe. Kimberlin put the shot up, but it was blocked in there by Valerie Little and saved by Becky Clevenger. Good defense by Millard Lady Mustangs that time. Absolutely, and a block from an unsuspecting source. One of the guards gets the block. Here's Selena Smith with it. She's guarded by Emily Johnson. Out to Becky Clevenger. She tried to get it into uh, the big girl row. Let's see, what was the call, Darren? It's a personal foul. She pushed off to get open, says the official. So Roll will pick up her second personal. Team foul number six. Anybody got over two fouls, Darren? I don't believe so, did you? And no, I don't think so. Bill, check the quick scan other side. No, nobody's got more than two. 6.25 left to go in the first half. Miller leads it 18 to 9 over these Pipe Lady Panthers. Real well for me, with each other. They've played each other, I think, uh, three times earlier in the season. Ball goes out of bounds. A turnover is uh, Charity Burke just took her eye off of it. Absolutely all you can say. Three turnovers now for the Lady Panthers. Here's Bartley, outside shot, ride it down, ride it down. She's red hot tonight, Darren, so far. Absolutely, Brittany Bartley is unconscious right now on the floor, <laughs> playing some of the best basketball you can watch anywhere. And pipe has got a couple new players in there. We'll have to check that. Here's Charity Burke with it, though. PC put the shot up, no good, but a this one foul. And I believe the person was going to go against Roll, and that's going to be three for her, and she's going to have to take a seat. She didn't like it, but she's got to take a seat on the. And I'm sure they'll probably let her sit there the rest of this first half because we've still got almost six minutes left to go in this first half, Darren. Absolutely. And Roll began to find her range. She already has six points, as well as two rebounds. And we've got number four in there for Miller. Let's see, that's Ashley Ratler. She's just an eighth grader. And also number 32 check in, Stephanie Keeney. Free throw is good by Charity Burke. Makes the score 20 to 10. Lady Mustangs on top. Second free throw, good again. Power comes out in that full court. Press. Here's Ratliff with it. And to Bartley. Long cross court pass to Becky Cleveland. That's a dangerous pass. Back to Ratliff. Ratliff now playing the point guard position for these Lady Mustangs. They give it in to Bartley. Bartley shot up and good. Don't think she even looked at the rim that time, Bill. <laughs> Just trying to let that thing go. She can't miss right now. Brittany Bartley scoring. Good pr pressure outside. They say a whistle on a foul against the Lady Mustangs. 
Rushing is going to go against Selena Smith. She picks up her first. Team's eight as the Lady Panthers have entered the one and one bonus. And it'll be number 12 in there. We have that as Stephanie Kenny, uh, Kelly, excuse me, going to the uh, charity strike for one of the bonus for the Lady Panthers. Stephanie Kelly. She's just an eighth grader. First free throw, no good. Rebounded by Bartley of Millard. Over to Ashley Rattler. She gets it across the timeline, gives it to one of the captains, that's Becky Clevenger with it. Now back to Bartley. Tell you what, the way she's been playing, and I tell her to go ahead and shoot it from her. I <laughs> Absolutely, I don't know why she passed up that <laughs> shot. She hasn't missed one tonight. Good defense in there by Kelly. They almost take it away. Picked yeah, up by Becky Clevenger, though. Clevenger was nearly forced over and back. And we may have put a little jinx on her. That's the <laughs> first mistake she's made all night. Goes off the hands of Bartley, so it goes back over to the Lady Panthers. Here's Charity Berkeley. She spin, no good. I believe they got her for the offensive foul before the shot, bang. Well, they absolutely did, and that's her second personal, and that'll send the Lady Mustangs to the line for the one and one bonus, and I don't think Burke can believe that one. A little bit of a delay on the whistle there, but I think it was a good call. 22 to 11, Lady Mustangs on top, 439 left to go in the first half of play. You're tuning in to us late. Bonus tonight for the boys action. The Pieville Panthers coached by Dave Thomas taking on these Pike Central High Hawks coached by David Rowe and what ought to be a Jim Dandy. Speaking of good games, Darren, over to 60th District last night. Boys action, uh, Phelps defeated uh, Belfry over. Absolutely, maybe one of the biggest upsets uh, in recent history. I understand Belfry doesn't go to the regional tournament for the first time in 19 years. <laughs> And shot up by Ratliff was good. And I believe that's the first time that Phelps has been to the region in quite quite a long time, I believe. I think you're absolutely right. So uh, Don't have the exact numbers on that. But tremendous boots for the Phelps Hornets program. Anyway, they'll be going this year. Coach Provena, she lost it. Picked up by Ratliff from Millard. Safe grader shot up. No good. Rebounded in there by Ivana Copravenka. Over to Kimblin. Got Millard in a little bit of 2 3 now. Shot up, rebounded by Bartley of Millard. Give Becky Clevenger. Sorry, Bill, I want to give credit to the Lady Mustang defense right now. In this quarter, Pobble has two points, and they were free throws. Here's Becky Clevenger from about 15, shot no good, but rebounded by Connie Mullins of Pottwell. Kimberlin crosses the timeline. She's in a hurry now for Pipewell. Now she'll back it out and set it up. Over to Kelly. A couple eighth graders in there playing guards right now, and Coach Maria Shockey wants to talk about it. So with that, we're going to take time out right here on your Intermountain Sports. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Lady Panther cheerleaders perform. I'm going to tell you about the K Posh cheerleading competition for the 15th region cheerleaders. It'll be held this Saturday, March the 1st, at Johnson Central High School, starting at 11 a.m. As I understand it, WPRG will be there with the cameras and bring you a tape of that back if you can't make it out. But 
Absolutely, go out and support the cheerleaders. Not a game without the cheerleaders. And I think it's what all the cheerleading teams in the 15th region, Darren, have down there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's their regional tournament, the cheerleaders' regional tournament, Saturday, March the 1st. Ought to be some good competition right here. Our score, 24 to 11. The Lady Mustangs on top of Powell right now with 314 left to go in the first half. The winner to take on Pike Central Lady Hawks for the champion here Saturday night. They get it into Burke. Burke shot up, blocked in there by Bartley. I'll tell you what, Bartley didn't have to jump much on that, Darren. No, she, she didn't. Burke kind of put it in her hand for that one. She stands about 6'2 down there, the Bartley girls. Taken away by Kelly of Pottle. Drive left baseline, shot up, got it. Stephanie Kelly scoring the little eighth grader. That's a huge basket for Pottle just because they haven't scored but one field goal. That was it this quarter, and there's just 2.41 to go. There's Selena Smith out top. Now back to uh, Rattler, Ashley Rattler. Long shot by Selena Smith. Shot no good. Rebound by Kopravinka of Pottle. Up to Burke. Burke. Inside shot, no good. Gets her own rebound, puts it up, no good. Step for it. Goes out of bounds, they say last. Touched by Coach Pavlinka, Pottle, so it goes back over to the Lady Mustangs. Seven turner, turnovers now for the Lady Panthers. Here comes Ashley Ratliff working in backcourt. Very closely in there by the little eighth grader, Julian Kimberlin. Two eighth graders going at it right there. And I believe Kimberlin will pick up her second personal, team foul number eight. That'll be Ashley Ratliff stepping in there for one and the bonus as uh, both teams have got uh, eight fouls against them. 214 left to go first half. Bill Bevins and Darren Gearhart for the play-by-play -play and color commentary. On the Rainer Mountain Sports Cable Network, shot no good. Rebounded by Emily Johnson of Pikeville. Burke doing the basketball handling. Here's Ivana Kopravinka into Mullins. Mullins playing that center position. Back to Charity Burke. Kopravinka over to Kelly. They try to get it inside to Burke. Burke just takes it away from Selena Smith. Put the shot up, no good, but rebounded by Becky Clevenger. Of the ladies in go the Millard Mustangs. And Burke with a heads up defensive play, but she couldn't convert it into any points, and that's been Pavel's problem throughout this quarter. Smith tries to get it into Bartley, and it's taken away in there by Ivana Kopravinkas. She drives the length of the court, puts the shot up, no good, but she's fouled in there by Becky Clevenger. And Clevenger will pick up her second, team foul number nine. Bill, these Lady Mustangs look impressive here in this first half. Shoot the lights out in the first quarter and smother your opponent with defense in the second. They have looked good, no doubt about that. 24 to 13 to score. Shot up and good. Marco Pavinka. She'll have one more. Got it. Referee straightening out. We did have a lane violation, but the basket goes we in. Did, so, so they counted it anyway, right? Just count the basket. No ball, nobody's hurt. Selena Smith working in backcourt. Powell staying in the full court press. Becky Clevenger. Emily Johnson out there on her. There's Ratliff down the lane. I believe she doubled dribbled. Good call. So nine turnovers now for the Lady Mustangs. 115 left to go first half. Here's Nair. Shot it. Good. Nair gets her first field goal tonight, and Pavel's starting to find this rhythm offensively. She didn't even foul trouble there, and she, uh, she's been sitting on that bench a while. Nair just now come in and uh, another turnover against Pop, uh, excuse me, against the Lady Mustangs. Actually, she only has one personal that I have recorded, Bill, and I don't know why she was on the bench for so long. Maybe just wanted to see if the freshman could perform. One of those starters. Well, Snare, I believe she's a sophomore this year for uh, Maria Shockey down there. All goes out of bounds. They say last touch by Miller. I have to correct myself. I said freshman. I meant the eighth graders. The two eighth graders were playing guard while Nara was on the bench. 
Meyer brings it in to Kelly. She fouled about it. Now she back it out there to Emily Thompson. Here's Alana Koprovenko, shot at beauty. And just like that, Pipe was right back in this thing, Darren. They've got it to within five. 24-19. Mostly due to Millard's sloppiness on ball handling, just like that play. And the pressure bothering the Lady Mustangs right now. So it's now 11 turnovers, four or five, I believe, in this quarter. Here comes Kelly with it. She crosses the timeline for these Lady Panthers out to Coco Vinka. Of course, uh, Millard's had one of the big girls, Rose, sitting on that bench from about the five and minute mark. Here's Charlie Burke working down the lane, shot up, no good, scrap part, claimed by Selena Smith. And a whistle will get a reaching foul against Mara of Pikeville. And Mara checks back in and picks up her second personal, team foul on number nine. Had an excellent point there, Bill. Since Rowe was set down, Pop was started to surge back, and just shows you how uh, much of an advantage Hype will give you on a basketball floor. And we've got number three in there. It's Amy Ratliff checking in for Becky Clevenger. Be Selena Smith going in there for the one and the bonus for the Lady Mustangs. They're on top by five, 24-19. Free throw, no good, missed it. With Charlie Burke, three seconds. Long three at the buzzer, count it. Beautiful shot by Charlie Burke, and what a way to end the first half. If you're Pavel, you know that's got to give them a boost. They've got it within two, Darren, 24 to 22. We knew it would be a good one. All right, let's go ahead and step on out, Dr. Don, and uh, we'll bring back talk about it a little bit and uh, give them some stats for the uh, first half tonight. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a worker's compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system.
tap time at the Alfred D. Newsom Arena, and you're watching the Pablo Lady Panther cheerleading squad perform their halftime routine. And while you watch that, I'll run down the numbers on the first half of tonight's first game of the first second night of the first round. I'll get it all out in a minute. First for the Lady Mustangs of Miller, they were led in scoring by Brittany Barley. No surprise there. She had 12 points. Whitney Rowe had six. Valerie Little with two, as did Rebecca Clevenger. Amy, excuse me, Ashley Ratliff also had two. They finished with 24 first half points. They were over four from the free throw line. They finished with 12 rebounds and 11 turnovers. Flip it over now and look at the home team on the scoreboard tonight. The Pablo Lady Panthers led in scoring in the first half by Charity Burke, who had nine. Ivana Kokovinka tossed in a field goal of two free throws for her four points. Tommy Mullins finished the half with three. Samantha Nara also had a field goal, as did Jillian Kimmelin and Stephanie Kelly. The last second three at the half by Burke gave Lady Panthers 22 total points at halftime. They finished the first half over, excuse me, one for two from beyond the three-point arc. Five of seven from the, from the free throw line, ten rebounds and seven turnovers. to remind you that Saturday, March the 1st, K-Pos Cheerleading Competition will host the 15th Regional Tournament for Cheerleading to be held at Johnson Central High School starting at 11 a.m. And once again, we will be there with WPRG TV5 cameras to bring that competition back for you. Be back in about three minutes, as you can see on the clock, for the start of the second half of tonight's game. I want to talk about a subject that's a little bit hard to talk about. Some of you out there may feel like you're at the lowest point in your life. Feels like it's never gonna get better. You feel like the only option out there is to end your life. I promise, that's not the only option and in fact, that's not an option at all. Taking your life doesn't end the pain, it gives the pain to other people. Keep your head up, I promise, things will eventually get better. Okay, our score 24 to 22. The Lady Mustangs on top as we're getting shot of some of this crowd. Of course, uh, Bill Wesley, my boy right there. Dr. Gunn getting shot at Myron. We really uh, appreciate all the fine hospitality they're giving us up here, Darren. They're bringing us some hot dogs and pop up here. Keeping us well fed, I guess. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Tremendous hospitality, a well-run tournament. One of the key signs of it. All right, we're getting ready for the third quarter play. The Lady the, uh, Mustangs and Miller taking the floor now along the with the Lady Panthers, 24 to 22, our score. And I'll tell you what, Darren, uh, Miller led it by something like probably uh, nine or 10 points there. And then with about three minutes left to go, right, well, uh, Lady Panthers started applying the defense, which really bothered uh, uh, Miller as, as the scoreboard clearly indicates. And they've got it uh, right now. They are right in the middle of this thing, 24, 22. Oh, you're absolutely right. And I think another point we need to remind everybody out there Roll got in foul trouble with three fouls at about that same time, had to take a seat. Pavel seized the opportunity, took an advantage by applying the pressure, and they're right back into us. 
Okay, it'll be Miller's basketball as we get things underway in the third quarter play. Here's Valerie Little, guarded by Jillian Kimlin. Becky Clevenger, she was open from about 14 feet. Here's Selena Smith, wide open shot, and no good, rebounded by Pikeville. Here comes Charity Burke. They just working around the top of the key. That's number 23. It's Ivana Kopovinka. Hope to now. Let's see. Good defense by Miller. Almost taken away, but claimed in there by Burke. Off Pikeville. Now back out to the eighth grader, Kimberlin. Charlie Burke, she thought about taking the long three-pointer. Ball's on the floor. Let's see. Scrap for it. Tie it. Possession arrow goes back over to Pikeville. Millard has decided to let Powell take the outside shot, it looks like, but nobody on the floor wants to take it. They've uh, packed the defense back in the lane, and they're going to play a strong 3-2 from there, but they're not pursuing to the wing very much. Powell has not put up the shot from out there. Here's Kimblin outside now, back to Kopovinka. <coughs> they get it inside now. She's guarded closely in there by Bartley. And Selena Smith almost... Throw it away, but ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Pipe with good defense by Miller that time. Well, Smith, like you say, Bill, just made a good hustle play, moved the ball in the direction of her team, and Kopovinka couldn't get the handle trying to run it down and loses it out of bounds. Here's Bartley way out there, gives it to Valerie Little, right baseline, shot up and in. Got good position on her there and just kissed it off the glass for two. Absolutely right. Run a little flip flop of what they ran all the way through the first half. They put the big girl out front. And let the guard penetrate down under on the post. We outside top of the keys, Charlie Burke with it. She drives lane, shot up. No good, rebounded by Rowe. Excuse me, I believe that, yeah, that's Rowe. In there, Whitney Rowe. Over to Valerie Little. Selena Smith, she's looking inside for Bartley. She gets it, but it goes out of bounds. Good idea, but just a little bit too high that time there. Yeah, it was, Bartley was in a... Great position to shoot, but a tough position to catch that pass, and so she loses it out of bounds. Here comes Kimlin. She's in a hurry right down the lane. Shot up, no good, but a whistle and a foul. It'll go against one of the big girls. Let's see. And this time it's going to go against Bartley. She picks up her second personal. Team's first. And that may be what the strategy is. These Pipe Lady Panthers try and penetrate the lane and see maybe if they could get uh, a couple of big girls in foul trouble there. I think it has to be one of your main points of attack if you're under the serious high disadvantage that Pottville is. And so far, they've done it fairly successfully. They have Roll with three and now Bartley with two. Kimlin connects on the first free throw, missed the second one, rebounded by Selena Smith of Millard. Six minutes left to go in the third quarter. Here's Becky Carey. She'll walk it across the timeline for the Lady Mustangs. They lead it by three. And a whistle and a foul against Pottville. Kopravinka will pick up her second personal. Team's first. As the crowd starting to pile in now, Darren, getting ready for tonight's second game. The number two and number three seed going at it in the boys, Pike Central and Pikeville. All right, I'm sure this building will be packed for that game, but those who didn't show up for the first part of this game missed a very well-played first half. There's Valerie Little over to Rowe. She'll back it out. Becky Clevenger all along from 10. Got it. Clevenger gets her first field goal since the first period to get four points on the night. 28-23, Miller on top. Five and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Here's Nara down inside, blocked in there by Bartley. Bartley's a pretty good block, but they say they got, she got her with the body, so it'll go against her. That's her third personal, so now the Twin Towers each have three, and the team has two. Nara just constantly weaving and bobbing once she gets in that lane with the basketball, trying to find a way to the rim. Couldn't do it, but did draw the first one. Free throw, good. She'll have one more. Write it down. She, she, she connects two, uh, two from there. 28-25 score. 5.25 left to go in the third quarter. And both the big girls for Millard, Rowe and Bartley, each have three personal fouls. We're looking inside for Bartley. Bartley shot up. No good, but a whistle and a foul. 
They'll go against the Lady Panthers. Check it, make sure I believe it's going to go against Connie Mullins, and it does. It's her second personal team foul, number two. That'll send Brittany Bartley in there. Two shots at it from that free throw line. First one, good. She'll have one more chance at it. 29-25. It's been Millard from the start. Second free throw, good again. There's Pottwood, that's Cooper Vanka. Ball goes inside. Shot won't go for Burke. She'll go to that charity strike. And the personal's gonna be called against Barley. She just has to hang her head and walk back to the bench. That's four for her, team number, foul number three. And Barley played, a, uh, she played just a great first half of basketball for this squad, Darren. Yeah, she absolutely did. She had 12 points in that first half as we got a timeout on the floor. So with that, we're going to step on out for these commercial messages right here on your Intermountain Sports and bring it back. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. The hottest device of the new year is now at Appalachian Wireless. The Samsung Galaxy S21. Till the end of February, all Samsung S21 models will be $400 off on the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Now, 
When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a worker's compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. I want to talk about a subject that's a little bit hard to talk about. Some of you out there may feel like you're at the lowest point in your life. Feels like it's never going to get better. You feel like the only option out there is to end your life. I promise, that's not the only option and in fact, that's not an option at all. Taking your life doesn't end the pain, it gives the pain to other people. Keep your head up, I promise, things will eventually get better. Shelby Valley, where you've been watching the uh, Iowa High School cheerleaders perform here. Bill Evans along with Darren Gearhart for the play-by-play -play and color commentary. And Darren, it's all tied up, 33-33. Well, nothing decided after nearly three periods of play, and this has been uh, closer than we expected, I think, Bill. Miller got out to a big lead. They had something like nine or ten points early in the uh, uh, second quarter, but... Uh, Slowly, Pitman came back, started flying the full-four pressure defense, and they were down something like a couple at halftime, and right now it's 33-33. Brand new ball game. Here's Becky Clemens, and she hit a long three out there a while ago. She tried to get it in the row. They say last test by Roland Miller. Thirteen turnovers now for the Lady Mustangs. 2.42 left to go, third quarter play. Here's Kelly, working out the top. Two eighth graders in there for Pavel right now. He's a tiny low, and she's a senior. Over to the captain of his team, that's Charity Burke. Five ten junior. Coach Maria Shocker, Shocker got her down there from over here, and Kimlin shot up, no good, scrap for it. Claimed by Burke. Good hustle by Charity Burke down there. Kelly from about six feet, no good. I'll tell you, Miller's having trouble rebounding right now, Darren. Pavel got three shots at it that time. Absolutely, since Bartley sit down, they can't uh, rebound nearly as effectively as they did with both of the sisters in the game. Here's Ashley Ratliff with it, now to Valerie Little. Back to Ratliff, she's open, top of the key, no good. Played by Nara of Pottville. Nara right, in a hurry, over to the eighth grader, Kimlin. Shot up, no good, but she'll go to the free throw line. Let's see who they'll get with it there. It goes against Ratliff. I think that's fortunate for Coach Bradley's Mustangs here. Yeah, because I saw Row right in there. <laughs> Ratliff picks up her first personal team foul number four. 
you can see when the whistle, when the whistle roll kind of green is no, not me, I'm in the play. Game one, three rows right there where it ought to be. 34, 33, pop will buy one. Good again, 35, 33. Killers found the range on offense in this quarter. She now has five for the quarter, seven for the game. You know, he's working around the top of the key. They're looking for Rose inside, and the whistle on foul, and I believe they'll get higher from behind. You're right, they do, and that's her third personal team foul, number three. comes in to make you favorite. They're looking for Rome down low. He put the shot up and wouldn't go, but she'll get two shots from that charity strike at it. She draws the personal from number 12, Stephanie Kelly. Kelly, excuse me, that's her first personal. She's down at the four. That'll be Whitney Rose stepping in there for two shots at it. She's a senior for this squad. 35, 33, top on top. Those first free throws, good. In and in, nothing but nylon. Second free throw, good again. Here comes Pop with it. 127 left to go in the game, and we've got a good one. 35 for Pop, 35 for Miller. Playing even Steven basketball. Pass a little bit too hard. Here comes Barry Little with a run out. Shot up. Blocked from behind by Charity Burke. The Pipe Barry Little picks it back up. And she's fouled in there by a Pipe player. I believe that's a new player in there. Barry number 20. Let's see. You're right. It is number 20. And we don't have her on the book. Let's see. We've got another roster over here. Branham. Best neat Branham. All right. So Branham picks up. Her first personal, team foul number five. She's a 5'11 junior. Here's Ashley Ratt with a good shot up. No good. Rebounded by Valley Little. No good. They had a couple of chances at that time. Miller did. Here comes Pyle. A whistle and a foul against Becky Cleaver. Gillian Kimball just took it coast to coast. But he just mugged her on the other end. <laughs> Maybe it could have called an intentional, but they didn't. Leave it at a first one. That'll be three for Rebecca Clevenger. Five for the team. Even from way up here, Darren, I can tell that was a pretty hard foul. <laughs> 57 seconds left in the third quarter. Kimlin's free throw. No, rolled out on her. Second free throw, good. Now, see our old buddy Victor Moore down there, Don. Walking through the stands here. Right behind the scores table. Here comes Miller with it. Out to Rattler. Out to Valley Little. She's already posted around by Kim. Miller's working around top key. Selena Smith from 10. She knocks it down. 37, 36. Miller on top. Smith gets her first field goal of the night. Here's Kelly. Here from Kelly out top. Guarding in close to the night. Ashley Rattler. Into Charity Burke. Seems like we've mentioned that name a whole lot tonight, Darren. Absolutely. <laughs> and anytime you uh, watch Bible play, you're going to mention her name for as long as she's around. Whistle the foul. It'll go against Miller. She goes against number 50, Valerie Little, her second personal. Team foul number six. And we've got number 32 checking in there for the Lady Mustangs. That's Stephanie Kenny. She's uh, a sophomore for the squad. Also checking in Bill's number three, Amy Ratliff. She'll replace Little. Emily Johnson bringing the ball inbound for Pavel. Kimberlin from 15. Shot no good. Rebounded by Ratliff. Over to her sister. I believe the sister's in there. Amy and uh, Ashley. Here's Rowe into the lineup, shot no good, and she'll go to the charity strike. And I think Bethany Brown will pick up her second personal. She does. Team foul number six, so as it stands, the next foul will 
hitter to the opponent's team into the one and one bonus. Coming in Whitney Rose. Formerly a Bartley. And one of the Twin Towers for the Lady Mustangs. 38-36, the Mustangs on top by two. Go can make it three if she connects here. And no good. And the quarter ends with a score, 38 for the Lady Mustangs, 36 for the home team on the scoreboard, the Lady Panthers. Let's go ahead and kick it on out, Dr. Don, and we'll bring it back to the final eight minutes of play from Shelby Valley in the 59th District Tournament Action. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. see the lineup of all new 2021 Harley said mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. Back at Shelby Valley, our score 38-36, the Lady Mustangs on top. And Darren, I think we can safely say it's anybody's ball game at this point. Oh, absolutely. Just whichever team uh, gets the last possession and shoots the last shot, the way this one's been played, Bill, it's been nip and tuck ever since the second quarter when Pipe will climb back in it. Millard had the big lead but couldn't hold on to it. And following this one, it'll be David Rose, Pike Central High Hawks, going against... Dave Thomas's Pikeville Panthers, the winner to take on Shelby Valley Saturday night here to, for the title of the 59th District Tournament. And as we get things underway, we have a tie at possession arrow sends it Pikeville's way. Be interesting to see here, Leo. I noticed that Bartley didn't start the fourth period. How long Coach Bradley can go before she gets her back in the lineup? She's got four, and I believe uh, Rose got three, don't you, Darren? You're right with those numbers, but even at that, you know these two senior players are going to contribute immensely to your team, and you can't afford not to have them on the floor. Pottwell took the shot and got the offensive rebound, so it's Kelly out top working against Ratliff. Burke looks in fight side for Jillian Kimberlin, blocked in there by Rose. She's got to be careful playing with three, but she definitely had the high advantage there. Here comes Ratliff with it. She pulls the trigger from about 10. Shot no good. And they got her with her fourth foul right there. See, she pushed out. And as advertised, the Lady Panthers will enter the bonus. Seven personal, or 17 fouls now for the Lady Mustangs. And they say Rose pushed from behind. So uh, the Twin Towers in some definite foul trouble here for uh, Sandy Spradlin's Lady Mustang. Foundation's a little shaky on those towers right now, Bill. <laughs> foul trouble is uh, about to bring them down. Connie Mullins' free throw won't go. Rebounded in there by Stephanie Kenny, a sophomore, number 32 now into the lineup for Miller. There's a whistle on a foul here to go against Charlie Burke, and now to send Miller to the free throw line. I believe that's 17 fouls against Pottwell. And the personal against Burke will be her third. Team seven. A quick rundown on the rest of the players on the floor in foul trouble. Maybe Charity Burke and Samantha Nara of Pottwell have three each. And of course, the Twin Towers for the Lady Mustangs have four fouls. 
apiece. That'll be Selena Smith stepping in there for one and a bonus. Free throw, can't get it to go. They're rebounded by Rowe, and they say she pushed out. And we've got a technical call on Rowe. But she didn't like the call, and the official stuck her with a technical as she took a seat on the bench. I don't know, she went over there to sit on the bench. Uh, that's just that, a little bit of motion there. I don't know about the technical there. I thought it was off a quick technical foul there. Uh, it was a little quick. You know, these uh, ladies are going to be fired up to play tonight, especially being your senior year. You want to go out a winner. And she was just frustrated at being called for the foul. She didn't think she committed and came over and slammed the seat. Didn't think it was anything toward the official. Don't think she said anything, but that was enough to draw the technical. From our advantage, I don't believe she said anything. From our advantage, up here, of course, we weren't down there. But nonetheless, that'll send Connie Mullins to the free throw line. The Piper. Free throw, no, she missed it. Gotta wonder now how Millard is gonna respond to losing one half of the Twin Towers. Is it gonna be a catalyst or is it gonna hurt this team? You know the team a lot better than most of us, Bill. What do you think? We'll have to see, Dan. We've got seven minutes left to go. I know that, uh, of course, uh, she plays a big part of this uh, offense for Millard, no doubt about that. Charity Burke connects on the free throw. Still got 7.07 left to go in the ball game. So now Rowe will be replaced by her sister, Brittany Bartley, who Steps on the floor with four fouls also, so she's going to play very careful out there. And if you're Pitebull, you have to know that. you probably got to take it to her. Absolutely. Look for Burke or Kimberlin probably to receive the basketball and go right at her. Our score's tied, 38-38. Pitebull with the basketball. They get it into the And good defense by Miller. As Becky Clevens almost stripped it away. Here comes Charlie Burke down the middle. And believe she, she walked with it. Good call. Thirteen turnovers now for the Lady Panthers. And Rose still kind of emotional down there on that bench for Miller, Darren. She's a senior. You know she wants to go on. This is her last year. Absolutely. And you know she wants to be on the floor every minute possible. And a game of this magnitude certainly don't want to get in a position not to be able to help your team. Valley Little got it for the turnover. 6.41 left to go in the basketball game. We're all tied up. Pop, excuse me, pop with position. Kelly working outside, top of the key. They get it into Nara. Connie Mullins, good defense in there by Kenny of Miller. Nara put the shot up from about six, got it. Now we see the strategy we talked about. Nara goes right at Bartley, who cannot afford to defend, and she gets the two points. Here's Kenny with it. She'll back it out there to Selena Smith. Good basketball game. Becky Favreson. And for some of these seniors, these seniors got to step up now for Miller Darren. Six minutes left to go in the ball game. They're down by two. Becky Clevenger, one of the seniors. Good shooter from there, but she missed this one. Here comes Charity Burke of Pikeville. She's on, in a hurry on the run. Now she'll back it out to Kelly. Back to Burke. She thought about pulling the trigger from three. Long shot. And we've got a whistle on a foul. I believe they'll go against Kimberlin on the rebound. Absolutely, Kimberlin pushing off, trying to clear space to grab the board. Picks up her third personal, team foul number eight. That'll send Miller to free throw line for one of the bonus. That'll be one of the seniors, Becky Clevenger, stepping in there. I think you're absolutely right about one of these seniors having to step up and take the initiative here for the Lady Mustangs. They're going to advance on this tournament. Somebody needs to begin to dominate this game the way Bartley did in the first period. Rebecca Clevenger, she connects on the first one. Second free throw, no, missed this one. Rebound by Nara of Pikeville. <coughs> 40 39. Pikeville leads it by one. Here's Nara. Shot up. No, rolls down the rim. 
And here come Miller with it. And Narrow getting that shot too easy for Pipewell in there, Darren. Good value a little with a long three. Goes out of bounds. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Bill, but that goes back to Barley having four personals. She's uh, kind of handcuffed in there, just can't defend aggressively for fear of having to join her sister on the bench. Here come Kelly with it for Pipewell. Now over to Kimberly. Miller in that zone. Shot up by Nara. Got it. 42-39. Somebody, I know that Rose uh, handicapped in there, but somebody's got to come out on her, Darren. Absolutely. So Matt Nara with six points in a quarter, 10 for the game now. Here's Miller. They miss it. He banded by Kelly. We're going the other direction. Miller's got to get very careful right here not to get too careless. And I believe we got steps called on Charity Burke. And I believe Miller wants timeout. So for that, we're going to step on out for these fine commercial messages and bring it back for the final four minutes and a half of this basketball game between the Pipewell Lady Panthers and the Lady Mustangs. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. As you watch the uh, Pipe Lady cheerleaders perform, the Pipe Central uh, Hawks and Pipe were going at it in the boys' action that. And I noticed a couple of boys out on the roster for uh, Pipe Central tonight, Darren. Of course, uh, Mike Gillespie, he's a senior. I understand he was in a car wreck the other day and injured. Uh, I don't really know his condition. I hope the young man's all right. We'll try to get a chance to talk to David Rowe a little bit later about that. And uh, I don't think Jimmy Johnson will play. That could be a... Uh Truly big advantage for the Panthers as they are in for a battle in that game. And who so said uh, Gillespie being a senior for that team, you know, is going to take some leadership away from the Hawks. And they've played a couple games earlier in the season. I think they've split one apiece. But right now, we've got a good one on our hands. 42 to 39. Pipe Lady Panthers over these Lady Mustangs with four and a half minutes left to go. Here's Valerie Little, guarded by the eighth grader, Jillian Kimlin. They get it into Selena Smith. Selena Smith back to Bartley. Bartley drives left baseline, shot up. No. Be bad by Kenny, though. She puts it back up and in. Huge basket by Stephanie Kenny as she crashes the offensive board and gets it up off the glass. Here's Nair. It's blocked in there by Bartley, and she throws it away, picked up by Kelly. Here's Charity Burke. Very closely in there by Selena Smith right now. Into Mullins. Back to Jillian Kimlin. She nails it from about 14, 15 feet on the right baseline. 44 to 41. Here's Valerie Little, one of the seniors for this squad. And they get Nair for the technical foul. So Nair with that personal picks up her fourth. Team foul number nine. Darn, I'll have to make a comment here. I really don't see a whole lot of difference in what she did and the young lady did for Miller. She slapped the floor after the call, and uh, the young lady, Bartley, uh, didn't do much more than that. She, she even said it took a seat on the bench. Yeah, I, I kind of <laughs> agree with you. I thought it was a little bit quick on the technical. But the officials have to feel like they're in charge, and she thought that was the appropriate call, so we commend her on that call. Free throw wouldn't go, 44 to 41, 335 left to go. Here's Burke, shot up in about 10, no good. Rebounded by Connie Mullins, so that's a tight one. So Miller not getting on the offensive glass. Ball goes out of bounds, they say it goes over to the Lady Mustangs. Miller really 
Baylor needs to look probably to Bartley, who has led them most of this game right now. They have to get some positive flow on the offensive end of the floor. Here's Valerie Little. Good three-point shooter out there. I think she needs to get more into the offensive flow of the game. Here's Becky Cleveland draw along from eight. She nails it. 44-43. Well, whether it's Clevenger, Smith, or Bartley, somebody, some senior, some leader has to be found for these Mustangs. And there's Nara again. I'll tell you what, one of these ladies going to have to step up and get a hand in her face because uh, she's made like the last three or four shots from out there, Darren. Absolutely has, and uh, Bartley's teammates have got to realize that she has four personals and help rotate over and play defense when Nara receives the basketball. Ball comes in to Becky Clevenger. She gets it across the timeline over to Selena Smith, 46 to 43, her score. 240 left to go in the basketball game. Miller down by three. They look inside. Ball saved in every fight, but picked up by Valerie Little. Now she loses it. And a whistle and a foul, I believe it'll go against Selena Smith. We'll check it and see. It does, and that's two personals now for Selena Smith. Nine for the team. And that'll send number 12 in there, Stephanie Kelly. She's an eighth grader for these uh, Pipeville girls. <laughs> Kelly's first free throw, no too hard. Our score remains 46-43, Pipe one top by three. Exactly two and a half minutes left to go in the basketball game. Kelly's second free throw, no. Rebounded by Bartley. She gets it out to Little. As good as this game's been, Bill, you keep waiting for somebody to step up and make it a great game going in these last couple of minutes. And uh, just going to be interesting to see which team it is. Here's Becky Clevenger. She took it to the rim and a whistle and a foul. It'll go against the Lady Panthers. Personal is going to go against Stephanie Kelly of Popwell. She picks up her second personal. And Millard will join the Lady Panthers in the double bonus. That'll be Rebecca Clevenger in there for two shots at it. First one, too hard. 2.15 left to go in the basketball game. Our score remains 46 for Pipewell, 43 for the Lady Mustangs. Second free throw. Didn't get it to go. Missed them both. Here comes Jillian Kimball in the eighth grade across the timeline for Pipewell. For Miller, you got to come out and play good, aggressive defense right now. Two minutes left to go in the basketball game. Miller down by three. Long shot by Kimball. Shot no good. Rebounded by Valerie Little of Miller. Shot up and got it. He just took it coast to coast. 46 45. Pipewell by one. See the seniors one by one stepping up and making the big plays when Miller has to have them now. Minute 47 left to go in the basketball game. And Pipewell wants to talk about it. And Dr. Don says, let's just keep it right here. So if you're tuning in to us late, tell you what, this has been a good one. To open things up here on a Thursday night, the Miller Lady Mustangs and the Pipewell Lady Panthers will score 46-45. Pipewell on top by one. And following this, and we'll have boys action. David Rose, Hawks. Taking on Dave Thomas's Pipewell Panthers down there. And Darren, minute 42 left to go in the basketball game. Still anybody's ball game. Absolutely. This has been a great one all the way through. Uh, Miller came, comes out uh, with a quick burst to start. Pipewell slowly catches back up, and it's been nip and tuck ever since. And it's uh, anyone's ball game, as we said all night on this one. Just a shame that uh, one goes on and one has to go home, but. That's the way it, that goes in district tournament action. Absolutely, and we want to send our congratulations once again out to Whitney Rowe. Uh, tough break for the young lady. She's playing a tremendous ball game. She finishes with nine points, four rebounds, and uh, hate to see an athlete who can't perform, uh, especially in a game of this magnitude. You know, she's a senior, and uh, she wanted to be out there on that floor if at all possible. played, I believe, ever since the seventh grade up there. All right, we're back to action with 140 left to go in the basketball game. 
Hotwell by one and with possession of the basketball. Charity Burke and Tanara, she's been red hot. It's blocked this time by Rowe in there. They say last touch. Oh, excuse me, that's Bartley. They say last touch by Bartley, so it goes back over to Pottle. And a whistle and a foul on Millard. Going to go against Selena Smith. She'll pick up her third personal. As we've said already, both teams are in the double bonus. Might not be a bad idea to quick get a quick foul down there, Darren. It's according to whether they hit their free throws on, on both ends of the hardwood. Yeah, you're right. You're down that area of the game now where many times we see uh, it take about 15 minutes to play this last minute and a half because <laughs> we walk up and down the floor and shoot free throws. Charity Birch, first free throw. Can't connect on it. So the foul does turn out to be a smart one. You'll have one more look at it with exactly one and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. She nails the second, 47-45. Pottle by two. Here comes Valerie Little. Ratliff into the lineup, also for Miller. Valerie Little, one of the seniors for this squad, out to Becky Clevenger. Here's Bartley with it. Bartley, top of the key. Now she backs it out to Valerie Little. Little into Clevenger, shot up, got it, count the basket. I believe the basket will count. And a foul on Emily Johnson of Pottle. Well, we know the personal's there. We'll check the basket as the official comes down. It does count. Tremendous play by Clevenger. Miller's got four seniors on the floor right now, Darren. So, you know, uh, they've been in this situation before. Absolutely. Johnson picks up her second personal. And like we said, one by one in the first half, it was Bartley. And then in the third quarter, it was Roll before she fouled out. And now it's Clevenger. Rebecca Clevenger knows the free throw. And what a young team out there for Pottle right now, Darren. They got two eighth graders, a freshman, a sophomore, and a junior on the floor right now. Absolutely. The future of Pottle playing the absolute present of Millard right now. All right, here's Ashley Rattler for the steal. She puts it up, Charlotte, no good. Scott Park claimed by Charlie Burke of Pottle. 47 to 48, Millard on top by one. Here's Burke into there. She put the shot up and got it. 48 seconds left to go, 49-48, Pottle. This Here's, place is getting loud now, Bill. This game's going right down to it. Here comes Rebecca Clevenger, one of the seniors, out to Valerie Little. Good three-point shooter from there. She starts to drive into Becky Clevenger. Becky shot up it's too far underneath the basket. Tie up possession Earl. Let's see. Official call to jump ball possession. Adam did. They have not signaled the which way the possession arrow is yet. And we've got timeout, but we're not going anywhere. We're just going to keep it right here. 49 for Pottle, 48 for Millard. And I really, I still don't know whose possession it is, Dirt. I think it may be Millard. I believe you're right, Bill, but I, the last possession I remember, Pottle got it on the far end, but I don't think the officials have yet signaled it. I see now they're, they're checking with each other, going to find out. Miller down by one right now. Just like you said earlier, whoever wins this game is uh, going to thank the loser for being there and giving them such a tremendous ball game. It's such a shame that somebody can't, uh, that ha somebody has to lose this game. Seems like it might have been these same two teams in, in one of the uh, district matchups last year, there. It may very well have been. Uh, we, uh, we cover so many games anymore, Bill. It's hard <laughs> to place who and where. But anyway, <laughs> 49 to 48 are scored. Pottle by one, and let's see. I believe it'll be Miller's possession. They'll be bringing out underneath their own basket. Oh, here we go, 29 seconds. One point separates the two teams. And everybody up on their feet. These crowds, Pottle. And they get it in to the big girl. Let's see. She put the shot up. No good. Might have been a whistle. Might have been a foul. She put it up. No good. Goes back, gets it. And a whistle and a foul this time, Byrne. Tremendous determination and effort by Brittany Bartley. Goes up and gets her own rebound three times. She's got 10 rebounds for the game now. I'll tell you what, they were going to let them play, though. <laughs> Absolutely commend the officials for letting them play. You're right. <laughs> Let's see if she can capitalize on this free throw in there. She'll have two of them. Still 20 seconds left to go in the ball game. I believe the personal went against Kimberlin, her fourth. And 
What a moment for Bartley. Yep. Has to step to the line now with the game on the line. And we got to remember that uh, Rose been on that seat for Miller for about the last five or six minutes. One of the twin tires fouled out, and that'll be her sister stepping in there, Brittany Bartley. A lot of pressure here, but she's a senior. Oh, you're absolutely right. She's uh, been here and done this before. We got some time counting down on the clock. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. They've inadvertently set the timeout clock to start counting down, and we're waiting on it before we get back to action. Of course, you know that both of these teams want to go on. And the winner will uh, automatically get a bid to the region. Absolutely a crucial game for both of these two teams, and even more so for Millard, who has at least four seniors, maybe five, that's not going to be back if they lose this one. There we go, Bartley's free throw, too hard. She can tie it up for this one. And Pipe was called timeout, so we're just going to keep it right here. As, uh, obviously, uh, the strategy here is uh, try to keep her cold from that charity strike. <laughs> Absolutely, I the shooter. The inadvertent timeout clock, I think, may have worked against Miller right now. As Bartley had nearly a minute to have to stand on the floor and think about walking to the line of shooting a free throw. So. Coach Shockey got a, a free time out there as far as icing the free throw shooter. 49 to 48. Pipe on top. Miller's got one more chance to uh, tie it here as uh, one of the twin towers. Whitney Bartley will be stepping in there. She'll have one more look at, the, at it from the charity strike. We've been talking about Miller and all these seniors here on night, Bill. And of course, uh, everybody likes to see a senior go out as a winner. But what does it say about this Bible program in the near future? They're playing so, such young personnel right now that uh, they could be just a phenomenal squad in the next couple of years. You're exactly right. As they had, uh, like I said, a freshman, two eighth graders, a sophomore, and a junior on the floor. And also, uh, speaking of young talent, uh, Pike Central played an eighth grader in here the other night that was uh, just simply a fantastic player. As with Bobby Spears' Shelby Valley Wildcats, he starts two eighth graders on his squad. So this district, uh, future is bright. There's Bartley, here we go, 20 seconds. Free throw, she nails this one. We're all tied, 49-49. Ball comes into Charity Burke. Pop will have her last chance at it. Burke, down the lane, shot. She's got it, counts the basket, a whistle and a foul. It'll go against Miller, does she just take it coast to coast? Let's see who the person's gonna go against. Goes against Clevenger, who picks up her fourth personal. And Miller calls timeout and wants to talk about it. So 12.3 seconds left to go in the ball game. Charity Burke, one of the premier players in the district, just took it coast to coast right down the middle, made the shot. She'll go to the charity stripe to try to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way as they got the personal against Rebecca Clevenger of Miller. Well, if you're questioning us talking about Burke and her talent all throughout the game, you can see there exactly why she gets the attention she does. True clutch performer. And following this, we'll have boys action. Pike Central Hawks against the Pikeville Panthers. And Darren, we're getting an excellent crowd on hand. Absolutely right, Bill. And I love to see the crowds out to watch the boys' high school games, but need to see more people out watching these girls. These games are just as fun to watch, maybe more fun to watch, just as entertaining for your uh, money. This crowd has uh, definitely been fired up. And an excellent crowd on hand for both squads here. Of course, Pipewell girls playing tonight, and also the Pipewell boys in the second game. And I think we have an uh, official came over and told Miller that they have no more timeouts, and that may be a very important point if this free throw is missed. 51 to 49. And if she misses, Miller's just got to do a good job blocking out. But if she makes it, Darren, they need three. And Rebecca Tavins doing Valley a little to the... Uh, Let's see, she made We've the got free a throw. lane violation. The free throw may not count. I believe we have a lane violation on Emily Johnson. So yeah. how big is that? You're right. She made the free throw, but it won't go on the score clock. Well, we talked about the youth of Pavel 
all night long, and there is just the mistake of use. He just jumps in the lane a little too quick, trying to be aggressive for the rebound, and Miller has new life breathed into their chances. 12.3 seconds. <coughs> Darn, I'm getting a little hoarse, buddy. You may have to call <laughs> last this. Here we go. Valerie Little with it. She's a senior. Eight seconds left to go. Out to Becky Clevenger. Here's Bartley. Shot up. Won't go, but picked up. That's going to count. Back That's going to count. Back There's the ball through. game. And we've got overtime. <laughs> overtime here at Shelby Valley as Rebecca Clevenger got it on a last and put it down as time ran out on the scoreboard. What a tremendous finish to what has been uh, one of the truly classic basketball games. <laughs> this, I tell you what, though, this is this is one of the most exciting girls game I've watched now in a long time. <laughs> Absolutely is. I <laughs> have to go back nearly three years to get a game that's anywhere near this in district play. 51 to 51. Valerie Little drove the lane, put the shot up, wouldn't go, but Rebecca Clevenger, her senior uh, teammate, was right there. Happened to be right there at the right time. Put it up as time was running down on the clock. Here, uh, you said the word senior, and you've seen all that experience come to play. When Clevenger threw the pass to Bartley, she broke immediately for the rim, looking for the give and go. It wasn't there, but she stayed there and got the rebound to put it back up and in for the tie. And we got to remember that Pitewell made the free throw up there, but uh, they got the lane violation against Pitewell. That gave, uh, like you say, new life. For Miller, they just drove it coast to coast, missed a shot, but Rebecca Cleverly was in the right place at the right time, 51-51, and we're not through yet. And I see both those coaches down there kind of wiping that forehead a little bit. Oh, absolutely, this is a kind of game that uh, makes coaches grow old quick. We've got four more minutes left to go to see who goes on to take on Pike Central Lady Hawks in that championship game here Saturday night. I'll tell you what, Bill, the winner of this one is going to come out of this game so fired up that Pike Central is going to have a game on their hands. That'll be Charity Burke and Bartley living at center court. And Burke just stepped out and started the game. Let's see. Bartley back to Selena Smith, one of the seniors. Here's Valerie Little. She's Valerie Little's good three-point shooter out there, Darren. She's not, got a whole lot of offense on the uh, offensive end of the court tonight, but she's one of the seniors on this squad. She's a good shooter out there. We've watched her all year. Here's Ratliff, an eighth grader, into Bartley. Bartley, turn around from six, shot in and out, scrap for it, claimed in there by Charity Burke. She pulls the trigger from 12, shot too hard, rebounded by Valerie Little of Miller. Here, Little, she'll back it out now. She thought about driving the lane, but uh, good defense by Pipewells. They got back. Miller working around the top of the key. Look for the, the Bartley to post up. Rebecca Clevenger drives lane, shot up and in. Beautiful take by Rebecca Clevenger, center defender lagging. Just blows by with a quick first step, lays it off the glass for two. Here's Kelly. Miller setting up in a 2-3 zone defense right now, out to Cooper. Finka. Into Burke. Burke shot up inside the lane, got it. And wasn't a whole lot that Bartley could do about that, Darren, as she's playing with four personal fouls. Absolutely right. And uh, Pavel's coach and Pavel's players realize that fact, and I think we're going to see them go right to the middle of the paint. Here's Rebecca Clevenger. They try to get it into row. Taken away by Pipel. Good strategy. She just didn't get it quite high enough. There's Kimblin in there. Let's see if we got a reach-in foul against Millard. It goes against Valerie Little, her third personal. And now they say fifth personal. It's not what my book had. Apparently, I've given some fouls to the wrong players. Okay, we've got two it's fouled out for Millard. Rowe and Valerie Little. I believe Kenny will come in to replace her, Stephanie Kenny, right now. She's uh, a sophomore for this squad. Well, Little sits down uh, with six points, three rebounds on the night. Tell you what, Darren, you got to give uh, a lot of credit to these uh, young ball players of the Pipewell Lady Panthers, though. Oh, Eighth graders and a freshman, sophomore in there. 
Absolutely. But they have played tough. Can't say enough about them. <laughs> They've uh, come through in a, in a big way in a tough situation. Kimberlin at that charity stop. Misses the first one. That's Julian Kimberlin. A 5 7 8th grader. Second free throw. No, missed it. We down by Kenny. They'll give it back to Rattler. Two 8th graders going at it out there. 53 to 53. Here's Rattler from back to Bartley. Look for to go to Becca Clevenger. She's a senior. She's made the last couple of baskets down here, Darren. And Rebecca Clevenger drives right baseline. Official in a pushing foul. I believe it'll go against the eighth grader, Kimberlin. I believe it will. We'll wait and see. The official book says it's her fourth personal. I got so caught up in the action there in the last couple of minutes, I've missed <laughs> some fouls up here. And trying to catch back up. That is four for Kimberlin. That'll be Becky Clevenger stepping in there for two now as the both teams in the double bonus. Uh, got it to roll down for it. 54 53, Millard on top by one. Becky Clevenger steps in there, makes it both. Here comes Pitewell. Clevenger stepped up big in the overtime. The lone lady Mustang with points in this overtime period. Stephanie Kelly playing that point guard. It's Charlie Burke. Burke. She's looking for somebody to give it to. Ball goes out of bounds. They say uh, deflected by Miller, though, so it'll stay with Pipe. Ashley Ratliff, the girl with the quick hands that time. 148 left to go in the ball game. Miller 55, Pipe with 53. Here's Kelly with it. Miller's staying in that 2-3. Look for him to go to Charity Burke. She's the captain of this squad. No doubt about that. And Kelly almost walked with it into Copervinka. Emily Johnson shoots his shot from about 10 feet. Shot no good. I believe we got a over and back foul against Becky Clevenger, Darren. I think you're right. We'll wait and check it for sure. That is the call, and that is her fifth personal. So Clevenger will have to take a seat. That's the third Lady Mustang to have to do so in this ball game. That's not good news for Millard. We got three that's fouled out for the Millard Mustangs, and I believe they'll send another uh, sophomore in there. That's Amy Ratliff. Clevenger played a phenomenal ball game. Like you said, she's a leader of this team. As all of these young ladies have been that have fouled out, she checks out with 19 points, four rebounds, and she has been the lone Mustang to score in this overtime period. So offense going to have to come from somewhere else for the last minute 33. And that'll be number three, Amy Ratliff. She's a sophomore. And that'll send Jillian Kimberlin in there. Also, we have Connie Mullins checking back in for Pipe's lineup. 133 left to go in the ball game. Miller leads it by two, 55 to 53. And we've got three seniors that's fouled out for this Miller squad. Kimberlin's free throw, got it. She missed two from there a while ago, but she connects on this one. She can tie it up with this one. And ball rolls out. Rebounded by Bartley. And look for Miller to go to the big girl down there, Bartley. We got two seniors in there, Darren, right now, Selena Smith and Bartley. Look for her to post up low. She's got to drive and take that basket. She's one of the captains on this squad, one of the seniors. She turns around from six, shot in and out, halfway down the iron and come out on her. Well, that's the way the last three or four she shot is gone. She looks smooth on the release, good rotation, but they just won't fall for her. 55 to 54, shot up by Charity Burke. It rolls in from about 10 feet. 56, 55, less than a minute left to go. 55 seconds. Here comes Miller with it. And we got steps on Ratliff. Turnover against Miller could be a costly one. 53 seconds. You know, just seeing the youth of Miller, uh, not used to such a tough game experience, kind of working against them right now. Here comes Kelly with it. Stephanie Kelly with Pipe. 56 to 55. Pipe will buy one in with possession of the basketball. Ooh. Kelly working out front. Very closely in there by Rattler. And it's getting to that point in the game where you have to try to either steal or foul. Can't afford to let this clock run out and you're trailing by a point. And you got to come out and get him. Finally, Smith realizes that and comes out 
commits her fourth personal. 30 seconds left to go in the basketball game, 56-55. Pineville leads it by one. That'll send an eighth grader in there, Stephanie Kelly. And we've got timeout on the court, but let's just keep it right here, Dr. Don. 56-55, Pineville by one. This has been a dandy. Later on tonight, it'll be Dave Thomas's Pipeville Panthers going against David Rose. Pike Central High Hawks. See who goes on and plays Shelby Valley as uh, Shelby Valley defeated uh, Miller the other night up here in the boys' action. Plus the winner and the uh, runner-up in district play gets to advance on to play in the regional tournament. That getting started next week down there at the T.W. Auburn Memorial Gymnasium. And over in the 60th, we already know who's going. It'll be Phelps and uh, Elkhorn City boys going out of that 60th district there. Well, no real surprise there about Elkhorn City. I don't think many people picked Phelps to be there. And they pull the upset over a highly favored Belfry. And now that 58th, I believe it's Prestonburg, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're right, and we'll find out the other finalists in that district tonight as Betsy Lane plays Allen Central on the boys' side. Still 30 seconds left to go in this game. And that's Stephanie Kelly. She's a 5'5", 8th grader for this squad and Coach Maria Shockey. We'll have one more. She connected on the first one. Should be enough for two shots, excuse me. That's 57 to 55. She can make it a three-point lead here. She connects on this one. And a little bit short. Scrap for it, claimed in there by Charity Burke. Up high for Miller's got to come out and get him. Now let's see who that goes against. Goes against number four. Ashley Rattler, first, second personal. I'll tell you what, somehow Charity Burke sneaked in there and got that offensive rebound. And Barley was up high and had the initial hands on it, but couldn't ever get the full grip, and Burke just kind of took it away from her when it got down around her shoulders. Kelly's free throw rolls out. Well, every time you think these Panthers are going to put the Mustangs away, they just can't quite do it. Be interesting to see if the Miller can get one more chance at it. And she she missed it and rebounded by Connie Mullins. Miller could, has lost, lost the last two offensive rebounds down there. Miller's got to come out and get them. And Pavel very smartly get the ball in the hands of one of their gifted shooters. That's Kimberlin. And what about that, Darren? They've had two changes, just can't get that rebound. Well, that's, uh, has to be extremely painful for the coaches of Miller when you get such great opportunities and you can't do anything about it. And Kimball will step in there for the free throws this time. Usually a pretty good free throw shooter. Pipewell's had, had a golden opportunity to put this thing away, though, Darren. They've had about five chances at it here in the last 15 seconds. Absolutely. And they uh, just haven't been able to do it. She connects on this, and that makes it a three-point lead. Big difference in the ball game. 14 seconds left to go. There's Kenny with it. And she loses it, ball goes out of bounds, but it stays with Miller. Well, Kenny looked like she was looking for Barley to get the ball to her, but she dribbled a little too close to her to make the pass and nearly taken away by Kimberlin. Miller needs three right now, but uh, well, their shooters are mostly on the bench. They're gonna look for Barley to take it. Bartley's long shot up, got it! She's oh, gonna go to two seconds left. 58 to 58. I'll tell you, what about that? Man, is this crowd fired up. What about that, there? Oh, it's... <laughs> Mother Lady Mustangs absolutely refused to give up on winning this district tournament game. What about that? Martley, Mother Twin Tower stepped out there from 20 feet and just canned it, man. <laughs> Still, Miller's got new life, 58 to 58. Pavel had every opportunity to put this thing away, Darren. Absolutely incredible that Pavel couldn't put it away. Three different chances, six shots from the free throw line. Couldn't get but two of them. And Miller comes back down. Barley has been a tremendous player throughout the game. 
lost her shot, and finds it exactly when she needs it. Pipewell had uh, like five or six chances to, uh, to just put it away up here with the foul shots, uh, and Miller just not getting on the offensive glass. Pipewell sneaked in there somehow, got two big, big offensive rebounds, kept it in the hands of, of uh, Pipewell. Miller had to keep fouling. They were down by three. Finally, Pipewell hit one up there, down by three, and then they had uh, four seconds left to go, and Bartley just nailed one from about 20 feet. Absolutely right. And I'll tell you, all you folks out there that are watching this game, uh, we couldn't have told you beforehand, but you'll wish you would tape this one, and if you get a tape of it, you want to hit that rewind button on the VCR. <laughs> Bartley wanted that shot. You've seen her set herself up. She knew she was going to receive the basketball. Tolls the line like a true senior, knocks the bottom. But these young players for Miller, of course, the pipe has been playing with young players all along, but these young players, players for Miller have now got to step up, Dan. Oh, absolutely. They're being initiated by fire right here in the, in the heat of battle. They're going to have to make some good plays if Miller is going to hang on to this thing. And Bartley's playing with four personal fouls. Tremendous uh, credit to her. She's had four personals since about halfway through the fourth quarter and has managed to play and contribute to her team throughout the rest of that quarter and the first overtime. So period. we're in double overtime here. There's Miller with it. That's like Ratliff. Ashley Ratliff into the lineup and also Amy Ratliff. I believe they're sisters. Not sure on that, but I think so. Here's Bartley. Bartley shot up. No good, but a whistle and foul to go against Charity Burke. I've got that as four personals against Burke. We'll wait and see what the official book is. That is four for Burke. And Bartley will step to the line to try to get some more points. Millard's already had three of their seniors to take a seat on that bench for fouling out. Here's Bartley. Free throw. Good. It's got to be a good sign if you're a Millard fan. Bartley got hot in the first quarter, and I think she could have drop kicked it in. I think she's <laughs> starting to warm up again right now. They've got to go to her, Darren. She's a senior. When she's 6'2", you have to go to her. 60 to 58, Millard on top by two. Tell you what, Pipe had every opportunity in the world to put the Lady Mustangs away at the end of that first overtime. You're absolutely right, and that's got to be working on the psyche of these Lady Panthers. They know they should have won this ball game, and they could not put the, the Miller Lady Mustangs away. Here's Pikeville with it. Miller playing that zone defense. Look for him inside to go to Charity Burke. The young guards out front, the eighth graders. Here's Burke. She's a junior for this squad. Miller. Emily Johnson, she's just a freshman. Miller doing a beautiful job right now, not getting overly aggressive on defense. They're ahead. The clock's in their favor right now. 322 left to go in the ball game. Shame anybody has to go home after this one as we're in double overtime. Darren, I don't know who I can make it for a triple overtime or not. Now. <laughs> uh, it's been a tremendous may, ball If they go really triple overtime, I may have to step out for a break. <laughs> Here's Charity Burke with it. Junior puts it up and in. Burke continues to play tough. Here's Selena Smith back to Rattler. They've got to get it across that timeline. Ashley Ratliff now up to her sister. Shot up. Scrap part, no good. Claimed by Pitewell. Here comes Jillian Kimberlin with it. Now she'll back it out as Miller's got back on defense. 2.34 left to go in the ball game. 60 points for the Miller Mustangs. 60 points on the scoreboard for the Pitewell Panthers. Our last trip down, Pitewell took about a minute off the clock. Interesting to see if Miller will allow that to happen now that the game is tied. 2.20 left to go. Pipe working around the top of the key. They get it into Charity Burke, the junior captain of this squad. Long three-pointer outside, but Pipe will good. That's I believe that was Kimberlin out there. That was Stephanie Kelly. Kelly. Her first points of the night, and she rips a three to give her team a three-point lead. So a big shot by the eighth grader in there. They get it into Bartley. Bartley underneath, shot up, no good. Scrap part, get Goes back, gets her own rebound, puts it back up and in. Brittany Bartley is going to war, Bill. She's not going to let this game get away. 63 to 62. I'll tell you, no matter who who uh, comes out here with a win, whoever loses this game, there's going to be a lot of tears down there, Darren. Oh, absolutely. Been a tremendous battle all throughout the nearly 50 minutes of this game now as we've played. Uh, We're actually into the fifth quarter. Pipewell working around top of the key. They've got possession of the basketball and they lead it by one on Stephanie Kelly's big three-pointer out there a while ago. 
Miller being tremendously patient right now. 1.08 left to go in the ball game. And Miller content on staying in that zone, letting him take some time off the clock. And now the coach is up yelling and telling him to go get him. Well, the defensive intensity has picked up a little bit, but Pavel still not moved in any kind of offensive set. And they try to find Charity Burke inside the paint. She might have walked with it, no call. Shot up and blocked in there by Bartley. 45 seconds left to go in the ball game. Here comes the Lady Mustangs. Look for him to go to Bartley inside. To Rattler. Back to Rattler. Rattler shot up about six. Shot no good. I believe last touch by Selena Smith of Miller. And they didn't find Bartley that time, but I believe you're right, Bill. They should have been looking for her. She wants that basketball. She's going to win this ball game uh, and is very nearly doing it single-handedly right now. 63 to 62. Our score, tight will buy one. They'll have possession of the basketball. We've got timeout on the court. Following this one, we've got boys action between the Pike Central High Hawks and the Pikeville Panthers. The winner of this one gets to take on Tammy Tessie's Pike Central High Lady Hawks Saturday up here for the championship of the girls 59th district action. And once again, Bill, we can't say enough about this young Pavel Lady Panther team who have come in here and just given Miller everything they can handle and maybe more. 63 to 62 are score. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. Appalachian Wireless. Now that Pam Ratliff into the lineup now. 
Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. The hottest device of the new year is now at Appalachian Wireless. The Samsung Galaxy S21. Till the end of February, all Samsung S21 models will be $400 off on the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. We've completed uh, what has been just a fantastic game to watch in Caldine. Double overtime, the Pottle Lady Panthers defeating the... Uh, Lady Mustangs and Miller, 64 to 62. Uh, you're right. There's uh, really nothing left to say about this when it's a been a classic ball game. Just to uh, watch it over and over. This is one to talk about from now on. And the seniors and Miller to uh, put on one fine show here tonight. Just a great ball game. Okay, Darren. What about some uh, final stats for tonight's game? Okay, we'll break it down for you here for uh, Lady Mustangs. The visitors on the scoreboard first. Led in scoring by Brittany Bartley. She finished with 22 points. Rebecca Clevenger trailed her closely with 19. 
Whitney Rowe finishes with nine. Valerie Little with six. Selena Smith with a field goal. Stephanie Kennedy also had a field goal. Amy Ratliff has a field goal, as does Ashley Ratliff. The Lady Mustangs were one of two from the three-point arc. Of course, the one sent it in the double overtime. Free throws, they were 18 of 32, looks like. And they finished with 24 rebounds, 19 turnovers. Flip it over now and look at the home team on the scoreboard. The Lady Panthers led in scoring by Charity Burke. 23 points. Samata Nara finished with 14. Jillian Kimberlin, the eighth grader, finishes with 13 points. Stephanie Kelly with six. Havana Koklovinka finishes with four points. Connie Mullins has three. The Lady Panthers were two of four from the three-point arc, 19 of 37 from the free throw line. They finished with 28 rebounds and 17 turnovers. This is a real good game. I'll tell you what, could have gone either way. All right, Dr. Don, let's go ahead and uh, we'll kick it on out as we're getting prepared here uh, for the boys' action between the Pipeville Panthers and the Pike Central High Hawks. You've been watching and listening to a WPRG TV 5 Sports presentation right here on your Mountain Sports.